Lincoln entered the sport utility market back in 1997 with the UN-173 Ford Expedition-based luxury full-size three-row SUV for the 1998 model year. Shortly after, Cadillac followed suit with the GMC Yukon Denali-based Escalade, and the luxury SUV wars were off. Interestingly, there was no other Lincoln SUV offering until 2006 for the 2007 model year. The first generation MKX rode on the Ford CD3 platform alongside the Ford Edge. The Lincoln MKX took styling cues heavily from the Aviator concept shown at the 2004 North American International Auto Show. While the Aviator name was not used in the production vehicle, that name would later appear as an Explorer-based three-row SUV. The MKX name was eventually retired alongside all other MK nomenclature, Lincoln's, and instead renamed for the themes of travel. For the MKX, in 2018 for the 2019 model year, that would be the Nautilus. Nautilus is derived from the Greek nautes, which means sailor. The Nautilus would be still based on the Ford Edge and the now CD4 platform and continue, continue its run with a mid-cycle refresh in 2021. For the 2024 model year, the newest iteration of the Lincoln mid-size two-row crossover SUV now sits on the Ford C2 platform and, with the Oakville assembly plant being retooled solely for EV production, the Nautilus is now produced in partnership with Chang'an Ford and Hangzhou Zhejiang China and imported to the States. Currently, Chang'an China's uh, Ford entire production base is now the largest manufacturing location outside of Detroit, Michigan for Ford. Our Nautilus was produced in December 11th, 2023 at the Ford Assembly Plant in China. Hello everyone, in today's in-depth review series, we are taking a look at this brand new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. This is a fully redesigned Lincoln Nautilus, redesigned from the ground up essentially. Brand new face of Lincoln, all new styling, all new interior, and it is striking. Today's Nautilus is actually a Reserve 2 trim level. It is a front wheel drive vehicle and it is painted in this absolutely gorgeous platinum white metallic. It is a tricoat metallic paint and it has this two-tone treatment to it because it has the jet black appearance package which comes to you at $3,000 and it does give all of the uh, chrome would now, is now jet black including the grill, the belt line and everything else, the window trim. And inside is the black onyx premium leather interior. And I do have full pricing on screen and a full options list is in the description box below, so make sure you go check that out. Today's review is gonna be a full in-depth review. We're gonna cover everything from the exterior to the interior, performance, mechanical, and everything else in between. For 2024, all-wheel drive is standard on all Nautilus trims and features a full-time viscous coupling automatic all-wheel drive system that works in conjunction with the drive mode selected by the driver. Power in this vehicle comes in the form of the 2.0-liter turbocharged and intercooled dual overhead cam, 16-valve inline 4-cylinder engine. This engine is of aluminum block and head construction and features gasoline direct injection and sports a 10.0 to 1 compression ratio. This engine creates 250 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 275 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. Because of how new this vehicle is at the time of the video, no instrumented tests have been performed, but we estimate 0 to 60 miles per hour in around 6.8 seconds with 0 to 100 miles per hour in about 19.2 seconds. The quarter mile in 15.3 seconds at 92 miles per hour, with a governor limited top speed of around 132 miles per hour. The Nautilus is equipped with a 20 US gallon fuel capacity and it consumes 4.2 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of about 480 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 21 miles per gallon in the city, 29 miles per gallon on the highway, and a combined average of 24 miles per gallon. The sole available transmission on this vehicle is an electronically controlled 8-speed automatic 
and it features low gear select and is actuated by these very classy crystal inspired piano style keys. There is no manual gear selection and the transmission is adaptable from the various driver selectable drive modes which instead of traditional terms like eco, sport, and normal, Lincoln has opted for a more unique moniker like conserve and excite. The transmission has a 3.805 to 1 drive ratio. All right, now we're gonna cover the rear in more detail, but as you can see here on the walk-around review, just a really nice, high uh, detailed look. Just looks really, really good. I'm not really sure why I said high detail, but anyway, we're gonna go over that in more depth there. All right, around the rear of the new Nautilus, has an all new design. Very crisp, sharp creases. A very modern take on the uh, classic, uh, I don't know, crossover utility vehicle. This particular vehicle has the uh, jet black appearance package, so it is a two-tone appearance with this uh, jet black roof here. It's actually a, a metallic. Coming down on this rear quarter window here has these uh, frosted lines here. It looks really, really good. And that uh, meets up with the taillights down here. They kind of have a similar pattern. And as you can see, they do have a sequential uh, light uh, to them. And they are actually a frosted red element in here. And they are three dimensional. They're divided by these uh, black strips inside this gloss black panel. Uh, smoked housings here. And then of course you got your reverse lights here and this light bar that goes all the way across. And inside is housed the Lincoln logo. And I do believe that's actually backlit as well for night driving. But the entire back end is actually illuminated. As you can see here, you have that waterfall turn indicator down there as well. It does have a remote opening hatch, ultrasonic parking sensors. And then down below, you can see those parking sensors down there. And then up top, you do have this uh, rear spoiler here that has houses the uh, third brake light. Now, as we walk along the profile of the Nautilus, I do have its dimensions on screen, so you check that out. It is not a three-row SUV; it is a standard, a uh, just standard two-row SUV. But it is absolutely stunning. I do love those. Those 22-inch wheels look very proportionate to the rest of the vehicle and the uh, jet black appearance package just really uh, makes a big difference. And yes, it is very windy outside. I think our weather is starting to turn into nice weather. Steering is electrically assisted vehicle speed sensitive variable rate rack and pinion with a 16.5 to one on center steering ratio and 3.2 turns lock to lock with a 37.5 foot turning radius. Wheels on this vehicle are the 22 by eight and a half satin dark luster nickel with satin chrome insert aluminums and are shod in the P255-45R22 Goodyear Eagle Touring All-Season BSW tires. Brakes are hydraulically assisted dual diagonal four-wheel disc brakes with four-channel ABS, advanced track traction control and roll stability control, along with pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking. Up front we have 345mm ventilator rotors with 320mm ventilator rotors in the rear. These brakes can halt the Nautilus from 70 miles per hour to zero and 165 feet. All right, just like we did up in the rear, we're gonna do the same up front. We're gonna walk quickly across the front of the vehicle, but we are definitely gonna cover it more in depth, show you more of those details. But this vehicle just looks absolutely amazing. I love the new face of Lincoln. I love this new Nautilus, and I can't wait to see what the other products have in store for us in the coming months. All righty, up front, the new face of Lincoln is apparent in the Nautilus. And it is a very aggressive looking uh, vehicle, especially with that uh, jet black appearance package. It looks absolutely stunning with this, uh, the white platinum metallic. Now, just as we saw on the uh, rear view, the windows are deep tinted, so it gives that appearance of black. It gives a really nice, uh, pretty heavily divided two-tone appearance. And then of course, coming down, you do have the gloss black uh, mirrors here mounted on these posts here. They do have the uh, side repeaters. Of course, you do have the requisite Nautilus badge here on the uh, doors. Moving down the heavily scalloped aluminum hood comes your headlights. They are a very low profile headlight design. They do have that same look as the uh, taillights do, that stacked housing there, but they're, they remain white. So they are the uh, driving lights and they go all the way across into the grill itself. They meet central 
to the illuminated Lincoln Star logo. Now, what you're seeing on screen is actually not happening in real life, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. That chase look, that doesn't actually happen. All right, so we do have dual LED high intensity discharge headlamps. Uh, the high beams are on right now. Of course, they are active motion headlamps as well, so they do bend with the steering wheel and are height adjustable as well. We do have a uh, amber turn indicator here. The Lincoln logo is right here. And you do have uh, active uh, cooling in this vent here that goes to the brakes. And with that jet package, the grill, instead of being metal, these are actually like a uh, metallic black or charcoal. Just a really good updated look to the Lincoln face. It looks familiar, yet somewhat different. Down below, you do have a lower auxiliary cooling and that uh, square in the middle is for your uh, Blue Cruise automatic cruise control. All right, now of course, this vehicle is equipped with a remote start and it is standard equipment. To operate a simple, just going to lock the vehicle and double press the remote start button on the key fob. Now, before we get inside, let's check out the key fob. And you're not, you're not gonna believe this, you've already seen it, but it's just a standard Lincoln key fob, which is actually just a standard Ford key fob. But this also does support your uh, phone as a key through the Lincoln app. But uh, the buttons on the front, they're a chrome instead of satin, unlike the Fords, they're chrome. So they have a nicer high, a high end look to them. So at the top we have unlock, lock, remote start, lift gate release and our panic alarm. Now this vehicle is also equipped with Ford's uh, smart key access system, the intelligent key. And by keeping the key fob in your purse or pocket, you're able to lock and unlock the vehicle doors. And as you approach it, you can actually see this uh, icon here. We could actually lock the vehicle. The mirrors are actually fold in automatically and the vehicle will indicate locked as on that uh, key fob or the keypad. And you can actually use the uh, keypad to uh, unlock by entering your personal uh, four digit pin number. And if you want to unlock the vehicle, simply grab the handles you would open it. One thing I want to point out before we get inside, the trim piece. Just like the Continental, the trim piece doubles as your door handle. So it's a very uh, elegant way of entering and exiting the vehicle. And anyway, by placing your fingers here, there's a membrane switch. We're just going to open up that door and we are greeted to one of the most beautiful Lincoln interiors I think I have ever seen in a very long time. A lot of purists are going to hate it because it's all screen, um, but man, it is a really cool, really a sight to behold for sure. All right, taking a look, quick look at the door panels before we get inside. It is all nice soft touch material in the high touch areas. It is a padded vinyl, have accent stitching going all the way up the door panel. And I love the way it follows this curvature, which actually does meet up into the uh, panels here. And then you have this ribbed black plastic here. Well, at night, this actually illuminates, uh, these ribs actually illuminate with the ambient lighting. You do have your driver or your door lock controls here, three driver memory. The speakers for the premium Revel uh, Ultima sound system. These are your mirror controls here. So your mirror fold away, uh, window lockouts, power mirror selection, and your mirror controllers. And I like that ribbed uh, button there. And of course you have your window controls here. Those are also ribbed. Your door release is right here. Nice padded armrest. Everything from the armrest below is all hard plastic. You have a nice amount of storage in the doors, the Revel badge on your uh, speakers. And taking a look at the instrument panel here, we do have our hatch release here. Instrument panel brightness and dim. This is a dim brightness. Automatic headlamp controls are right here. This is your electronic parking brake actuation and release. Hood release is right here. Adjustable pedals. Here we do have a uh, satin Lincoln tread plate. We do have our eight-way power seat controls for the driver and passenger, and they have that really nice aluminum finish to it with knurled edges. And you also have your um, lumbar support here. The steering wheel is electrically adjustable. It is tilt and telescoping. And let's take a quicker or a nicer look at those seats. The seats are very comfortable. They are very supportive up front. They are heated and ventilated. 
They do have the leather and they have a suede uh, accent on it as well. They kind of look like the perfect position seats, but I do not believe this vehicle is equipped with perfect position. You do have the uh, perforations in here for the heating and ventilation. The uh, nice transition from suede to leather continues down here. Just overall, the seats are very comfortable and very supportive. All right, let's check out the inside now. All right, now we're inside. We're gonna pan through the interior and show more details. You can actually see the ambient lighting right here. You can see how those ribs are actually illuminated. And let's take a look at that steering wheel. It is a very narrow steering wheel, uh, not quite a yoke, but it is a, um, it's not a D-shaped steering wheel. It's actually, a, it's an oval, really, um, flat on the top and the bottom, very low profile two-spoke steering wheel. And you do have these phantom controls here. You'll see the controls here, but whenever you actually touch them, you get a, a guide on the, uh, on the uh, screen that kind of shows your finger positions and all that. So they control um, your audio controls and your voice command controls and stuff like that. And over here, we have another phantom control, but one control is actually illuminated, that's our cruise controls. But you've also got other positions here that you can see. Nothing's really showing right now, but uh, we'll go over that in a little bit more detail. Nice leather wrapped airbag cover here. It's stitched, it has a Lincoln logo here. And over here we do have our turn indicators and our high beams, flash to pass and all that kind of stuff. And then over on the right, of course, we have our wiper washer controls. This is the uh, all seeing eye for your blue cruise, just to make sure you're actually paying attention. The two red LEDs that you see there are infrared. They are visible to my camera, but not visible to your eye. All right, so taking a look at how this, uh, I like how the door panel sweeps up in this really nice flowing motion into the instrument panel. As you can see, it is a large flat dash, just a flat surface all around. And we've got a bunch of screens. So two large panels, actually, we have in here, there's a center line divides there and it goes all the way over there. I believe those little small uh, third panels there that at the end of that radio and then to the door panel, there's a little screen there. Same with right here. I believe on markets that allow it, that is for uh, if you have a camera mirror instead of the regular glass mirrors. Anyway, so what we have here is just a large sweeping display screen. It is brand new for Lincoln and is very striking. Um, unable to get weather data, probably because we're not signed into Google or anything like that, but we have our fuel economy. This car gets way better gas mileage than that. Uh, it has not been driven very much brand new. And then of course you can change all these things. But right here front and center, we do have our driver's side instrument panel. So we have the lane keep assist area and driver assistance, all that kind of stuff. Speed limit recognition. I believe this is the power output here and your speed. You have a fuel gauge here and your temperature gauge is up here as well as your Prindle and your temperature compass and your miles. We've only got 12 miles on this vehicle. And these screens are powered by Google. Um, you can actually change the theme. So if we go into this area here, and then we can do, uh, I believe it was, hold on. Well, well, first we'll show you this. So we can actually change. So we got three different screens here. And by, if you wanna change, you can put the clock here instead of the weather. So now we have a clock. And then we have, we could put the music over here instead so that changes the music and then the fuel economy of course you can also do trip uh one trip two and tire pressure but uh we'll just move that back like that and then in the settings here you can actually go into i act like i've never done this before Okay, so we can change our themes here in settings. So right now we're in Constellation. It's actually hard to see because uh, the screen resolution is really weird, but we could change it to Tranquil, which just turns it into like more of a calm black. Engage, italicizes the speedometer and all that kind of stuff. Kind of gives a Milky Way look to it. And then Inspire is more of a, um, just a really pretty Martian type theme, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and these displays are actually not very bright, so I have it on maximum brightness, but we'll keep it there, and everything is within this little screen here. 
All right, as we move down, there's your engine start stop button there. And of course, we've already gone over all this kind of stuff. You have 911 assist, location, privacy, security, apps, all that kind of stuff. Home screen is basically when you sign into Google, all your Google stuff comes. You have access to your Sirius XM, um, your satellite radio, AM, FM. And of course, you also have Apple CarPlay, Google Android Auto. This is all your vehicle stuff here. So we have our drive mode select. We have ambient lighting select here. We can change our ambient lighting, um, change the brightness, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it has a new digital scent. Now there's no cartridges installed right now, but that's kind of cool. Valet mode, vehicle status, settings, all that kind of stuff. This is your settings here. And this is your uh, customized display uh, menu screen here. You've also got climate controls down here as well. They're integrated into the screen. So, and I believe you can actually bring up the temperature, which I don't want to do because it's actually starting to get warm outside. This controls your heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. This is your fan speed control here. Three stage auto. This is your panel distribution here. Max defroster, uh, rear defroster, AC, and climate control for the passenger side. Placing a vehicle in reverse activates your reverse cameras up here at the top screen. And like I said before, I'm not really sure why those stripes are like that, but it does have active guidance lines and a 360 degree top down view. And of course you can also change angles here, all that kind of stuff, but they all re uh, reference up here. And down below we do have our air vents down here, which are really nicely hidden. This is our transmission selectors here and a really nice uh, crystal clear piano key style um, presentation. Auto start stop on and off, four way flashers. This is our parking assist here. This is our max defroster, camera views, and our drive mode selector. This is our volume and power in this like really nice crystal look. Underneath this roll top, we have a wireless charge mat, USB type A and type C charger, just a little storage mat here, two cup holders padded armrest here, opens up to reveal storage, two USB type C's and a uh, 12 volt power socket here. And this box here actually has, what I was just referencing earlier, this is the scent cartridges. Of course, you also have some storage in here. Uh, so it's really nice. So overall, I feel like the interior of this Lincoln is actually very nice. It's a very nice place to be, very comfortable, very quiet. Uh, High quality to detail and materials. Overhead, we do have a three channel home link universal garage door opener. We do have overhead sunglasses holder. The auto air refresh, I think that's where the scent comes out. We've also got overhead map lights, LED of course, dome overrides. This is your panoramic sunroof controls, passenger airbag indicator, all that kind of stuff. Automatic gaming rear view mirror. Sun visors are nice and large. They're padded cloth. They do have a really nice frameless LED illumination. Of course, the sun visors do swing out and slide out on extension rails and they do have good coverage. And of course, you also have high adjustable seat belts and dampened overhead assist handles. All right, now let's check out the rear seat. Now you have the same continental style door pulls here on the belt line as you did up on the front doors. Just a really nice elegant way of getting in. All right, and as stated before, just two rows of seats in this vehicle. We do not have, it's not the Aviator. The Aviator is next in the uh, restyle, I do believe, and that's coming pretty soon. But anyway, their door panels are just the same as they are the front. And we have lighting back here, the Revel Ultima sound system, power window switches, your door release here, mat pockets, same materials, same quality and attention to detail. Now we do have a stainless steel tread plate here, but it does not say Lincoln. And a really quick look at these seats show that the seats back here are just as comfortable as the front seats. They'd have the black, the onyx leather and suede accents, high adjustable seat belts, or high adjustable head restraints on all the passenger seating areas. These seats also recline. They can recline up to 15 degrees, I do believe. But as you can see, very nice and supportive, almost bucket seat like on the outboards. If you wanna recline those seats, you could just lift up these levers here and push back and they'll recline. You do have these really nice seat belt holders here. And of course, we've also got a fold down center armrest. 
Now the center armrest is really cool because it's multifunctional. We do have cup holders here. And we also have integrated storage. Not very deep, but it's still there, which is better than nothing. And of course, overhead, we do have overhead reading lights, dampened overhead assist handles, coat hooks. You'll note the absence of uh, sunshades though. That's kind of weird. But notice how everything just fits really nicely together. Everything is very cohesive. I'm not the biggest fan of black interiors, but this looks really nice. Of course, we also have seat back mat pockets on the backs of both seats. And the backs of both seats also feature two USB type C chargers. The mat pocket there. Now back here, we don't have climate controls back here, but we do have adjustable climate vents, which is really nice. And the outboard seats also feature three stage heating. Just like that. You also note that even though there is a hump here, it's actually not very big. It's just about, I don't know, a finger's length uh, high at the highest point. I've also noticed that this bar here, you can actually adjust your seats fore and aft as well. So fore and aft adjust and recline, which is really, really nice. And of course the seats also fold. Lifting up that lever actually will fold the seats. And they do fold relatively flat with the uh, cargo area here. And they meet up pretty nicely with the uh, cargo mat. There's a big fold in the carpet here. I think that's, that's from me probably. Anyway, to lift the seats back up, just like that. All right, there are several ways to open the lift gate. First way is on the driver's side instrument panel. This first button here is the lift gate release. By pressing that, that'll open the lift gate for you. All right, and the other way is very easy. This decal here shows you. It's removable, but there's a membrane switch right here. And just by pressing that membrane switch, that'll actually release it as well. You can also use the key fob, this button here, by pressing it twice. will actually open up the lift gate. The other different way is the hands-free approach, and that's by kicking your foot underneath the bumper. As you can see, that also opens up the lift gate. It has a power opening and closing lift gate. It opens up really nice and high. All the hinges and everything are inside the uh, frame itself, so they don't impose on the uh, actual cargo area. But as you can see on screen, really nice cargo area for this uh, vehicle. Nice load flat floor. Over here we do have a uh, pop out uh, grocery bag hook, 12 volt power point here. These two buttons fold the rear seats. They do not raise them. It does recess in a little bit, but you also have tie down hooks, your top tether and anchors for your child seats. You also have illumination back here with LEDs and the other uh, grocery bag hook. 
One really nice feature is that you can actually fold the seats without removing the headrest or doing anything like that, just by pressing these buttons here, L and R, and they will fold the requisite seat. Left, of course, does the left. Right, of course, does the right. And as you can see on screen, that is your cargo capacity with the full seats folded. And as I stated before, unfortunately, you cannot re, uh, lift those seats back up. Now, underneath the floor mat, we do have, surprise, surprise, an actual spare tire, not a tire inflation kit. It is a compact temporary use spare tire, but it is a spare tire nonetheless, which is a really nice feature to have. You've also got your jack and tools in here as well. And if you want to close the lift gate, that's easy to do. Just press this here. All right, and there you have it. The full in-depth review of the 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. We hope you found the review informative. And if you did, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram channel at brinsoj1. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.